Baroness Philippine de Rothschild is here with me. She runs a Mouton Rothschild Chateau. It is a legendary vineyard, but this empire is about more than wine. It is about art, great art. The vineyard has commissioned a leading artist to design a new label every year since 1945. Designs have been painted by Picasso and Chagall, Bacon and Warhol, Dolly and Mata. This year, the artist is His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, an old family friend. The Baroness is here in New York for a special exhibition of the art from the Mouton Rothschild labels. It is being held at Sotheby's. The auction house is also hosting a special auction linked to this exhibit. She will be selling wines from her private cellars. She's been running the chateau since 1988. She inherited it from her father, who inherited it from his father, all the way back to 1853. Her sons are expected to take over after she retires. One will handle the business side and one will handle the art. I am pleased to have her here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank you. I got that about right, did I not? You got it very right. Take Even, I would say, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Take me back to, just to understand the family, yes. take me back to Nathaniel Rothschild. Yes. Again, you're yes. being very accurate. Nathaniel Rothschild, 1853, English branch of the family, right. son of Nathan, the famous uh, Nathan, right. who was Waterloo and all this. Exactly. You know. mm -hmm. And Nathaniel bought Mouton, in, uh, had married, by the way. So I always say, you know, the, the family's the five arrows, the five arrows, which are the five sons of Amschel, who left Frankfurt. I mean, one stayed in Frankfurt. Right. They all went around Europe and created those extraordinary banks. And I always say that that descent from two arrows, because Nathaniel Rothschild, English, married Charlotte, French Rothschild, yeah. daughter of James, French James. So I descend from them both. And you know, there was a lot of intermarrying in the family at the time. And so Nathaniel married Charlotte and bought Mouton in 1853, more or less for a mixture of his health, and he never put set foot in Mouton, and also to have his wine, his own wine, at his own table. Yeah. So Mouton really became... Um, his property at, on that year, mm. which means that we had a great affair in, to celebrate the 150th anniversary in 2003 of mm -hmm. Nathaniel. Then it came down directly at the fifth generation, which is me, a first woman owner. The others were men, you know. Yes, which yes, is, yes. Uh, well, but who was your grandfather? Henry, my Henry. father, Philippe, my <laughs> grandfather, Henry, my great-grandfather, James, but not the great French James, yeah. another James, and my great-great-grandfather, Nathaniel. It's, it's very close, really. it's very near. Your father was a famous baron. Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. My father, Philippe. Yes. Absolutely not. That's where my name, Philippe. Yeah. But he's, I mean, he's enormously famous because... Of course. He also, during the war, went with de Gaulle. Of course, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Your, your mother, yeah, my mother, during the war, mm, died in... Yes, in, concentration camp. In a concentration yes, camp. Yes, of course, yes, And how yes. did you escape? I haven't so Oh. That's a story. We'll be there tomorrow morning. No, no, no. Tell me. Just... <laughs> no, 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 because it's a very extraordinary story. But um, let's say, to make a very long story short, that I probably owe my life, and that, you know, gives you something very special in life. I owe my life to an unknown German who had a girl of that age, of my age, that is 10, in Germany, mm. and who oh. left me and didn't take me on with my mother. So that is said very quickly. This is... Uh, in a way, the story. And, and you spent the war where? No, that, my mother was arrested on 22nd of June, 44, which was really the, the yeah, end of the yeah. war. So we had, my mother and I, when my father left for, uh, to, to reach the goal, to find the goal through Spain, etc., and, and up to England, uh, my mother and I went up, came up to Paris, live in Paris, which was very imprudent in a way. But my mother thought she was, you know, safe and she would, nothing would ever happen to her. People don't realize, you know, how dangerous, I mean, especially it was so dangerous at the time. And unfortunately, uh, everything went all right until they were arresting anybody. You know, this was three weeks after landing mm. in Normandy. Normandy. Mm. Uh, landing in Normandy. So uh, they really would, you know, get anybody they could get. So they arrested my mother. My mother stayed in uh, France. Uh, this is a horrible story, I mean, it's tragedy, because she stayed at, in the prison of Fran near Paris for two months and a half, and she left by the last train of deportees, which left for um, uh, Germany. The one after was arrested, was stopped by the Allied forces. And when my father came uh, on the 25th of 
August back down, went down the Champs Elysees and met a friend and said, Where are Lily and Lily Elizabeth, my mother, Lily and Philippine? And the friend said, Oh, but the face yeah. dropped and he said, You don't know? No, I don't know. What is it? Uh, he didn't know his wife had uh, yeah. been arrested. And, and so he ran to the prison and she just left five or six days before. So, and I was hidden at that time in a little house in the country and I was safe. So this is it. So yeah. that's, you know, one of the, the historical tragedies, of course, history. Um, and how did he change the vineyard? Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say my father changed the vineyard. I would never say that because the vineyard, um, you see, there is this famous n word of terroir. Yes, terroir the means, land, the soil. It the means, no, it means more than that. What? It, yes, it means the sun, the wind, the exposition. Ah. It means a lot of things. That's very interesting. Terroir seems to come from the word terre, which yes. is, of course, the earth. Right, You're right. Right, right. But it does mean much more than that. And the terroir is essential. And the terroir of Mouton Rothschild has been the same for 200 years. So my father changed very little in the vineyard itself. Mm. The vineyard is exactly the wine we harvest today is the same wine as our ancestors harvested. But who was the first in the family to put it in the bottles, to actually do... My father. That's what I thought. And that's changing because rather than shipping the barrels... You're absolutely right. But he that, actually started oh yeah, putting it in the bottles. I, Charlie, I wouldn't call that... Uh, change Changing. in the vineyard. No, no, I would no, okay. call that change in the vinification and the way things were done after uh, the harvest. I mean, it's vinification. It's the fact of not putting, keeping the wine in a barrel for two years. When you say the last label we did, yeah. uh, her last label, yeah. my last label is 2004. Yeah. And if you asked me who was the painter, who would be the painter for 2005, first I wouldn't tell you, but if I knew, I wouldn't tell yeah. you, but, I don't, the but I don't know. Because 2004 is know. a label you're doing now, is 2004. Yes, yes, okay. yes. we're well, always but two years late. Stay with the history, because it's important mm -hmm. to understand you, because of this extraordinary life you've had, and what you do now. Mm -hmm. So he's running the vineyard, and, and you go off to have a career in the theater. Yes, that, that, yes, well, yes. And yeah, he, he's yeah. a very famous, he's the famous Baron Philippe well, Rothschild. Well, yes, of course, but you see, he was a sort of, he was a wonderful, genius man. Um, let me tell you something. You're talking about the label since 1945 done by painters. You're right. right. But there had been a once-off affair before in 1924. In 1924, to celebrate, the first mise en bouteille, bottling, bottling of, of, the, of the chateau, and this decision that he'd made that all his harvest would be bottled at the chateau and therefore he would be responsible for the whole thing, he asked an extraordinary poster designer called Jean Carlu, who was very well known, and his drawing is there in the exhibition, you could see it the day after tomorrow. Uh, he asked Jean Carlu to make a label, it's a sort of a cubist label right. and it's a once-off idea it was so pioneer that everybody in Bordeaux said this man is crazy so he, it had it stopped until 45 but but in fact he had already had he was 22 then and he already he had took it over that. when he was 20 wasn't yeah, he was yeah, 20 yeah, years yeah, old he yeah. went he was born in 192 so he, yeah. yeah okay take a look at this we can see it this is shows you from the Carlou first That's, time an artist was commissioned to draw and, a label and there's a ram like my ram here and then mm -hmm. and then in 1945 we'll see yeah. this is a Philippe Julian this is victory yes, year. Yes. What is amusing about this whole thing is when he did it in '45, when he had something put on his label, it was to celebrate return of peace, return home. The Nazis had occupied Mouton for four years. I mean, it was just something, a burst of joy to say that we were back home. That is the Churchill's right, V for Victory, right. done by this rather poor artist, delightful friend. He's Philippe Julien was wonderful Philippe man, Julien, yeah. died now. But, but, he, but the, the V for Victory it, it, it was a symbol. And the interesting thing is, my father, it, was, it had a great success, even then, immediately. And my father said, let's celebrate a historical, uh, historical event L the next year, 46. Why yeah, not right. historical? There was no art, no, no question. No. And, but, what was the great event in 46? It was Gandhi's death. Gandhi, I never tell this story, so it's interesting for me to tell it to you. Gandhi had never touched a glass of wine. And so, it suddenly appeared to my father how really empty it was to have the idea of a historical event, because you never know what the real important historical event is going to be. And through this sort of reflection of Gandhi, of this and that, he said, but I'm stupid, I'm not going to celebrate history, I'm going to do art. And that's how it began, in fact. So it, it was a sort of thing that came very slowly. And can I add something to this? For about 10 years, the artists were only friends, I mean, 
My father was lucky enough to have famous friends like Jean Cocteau, Leonor Fini, etc. But, but they were friends because no painter worthy of that name would put their signature on a bottle of wine that was going to be sold. It's very difficult to imagine this today. But the, a commercial art didn't exist. I mean, the painter said, oh, no, 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 that's under, under my standards. I can't do that. Until in 1955, and again, this is something that people don't know at all about, Georges Braque, Right. who didn't even know my father, who just thought this man was doing something amusing and interesting, he came to us and said to us, to my father then, and said, could I make a drawing for your label? My father said, well, of course. Why not? Yes, well, of course, we'd be thrilled. Immediately, yes. And since then, they all came in. Since Bach had decided to do it, all the great painters, Masson, Villon, Dali, uh, Henry Moore, everybody came in. Into, Picasso. Into the, Picasso, much later, but uh, they came into the picture. It's, it's now, very interesting. Has anybody you wanted to do this refused to do it? Any great artist that you felt would be perfect and said, no, it's not for me? No, not yet. <laughs> but I'm expecting it can happen. Why do they I'm do thinking, it? It's the other way around, actually, funnily enough. Sometimes my father was a bit naughty with painters. Um, there's a man, a very well-known painter, called Hunter Wasser, who died now. And he, he had uh, done a painting from Mouton a long time ago, 25, 30 years ago. My father didn't like it, and so Hunter Wasser came. And Hunter Wasser, on an exhibition he'd done in Paris, he put the painting in, he put underneath the painting, this painting was refused by Philippe de Rothschild for Mouton. So everybody was a great joke, which is true. There's also this part of the history the idea of achieving first run. You mean that Mouton was classified first growth? Yeah, first that? growth, yes. Oh, first growth, sorry. First growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's quite true. Um, in fact, Mouton had been classified in the 1855 classification yeah. as first of the seconds. Right. Which was a funny thing, a strange thing. I've always wondered why, and I always, I think that there's a lot to do with this, um, you know, the, the, the Bordeaux people were very stuffy and very, right. and this, this Jewish, what is this Jewish Englishman who bought this place? Mm -hmm. mm, what is this? You know, there was something like that. Maybe that Mouton wasn't classified first in in fifty five. So when when he was it was first growth. Yes, first growth, first growth, um, with the four others: Lafitte, Latour. Oh, Lafitte belongs to my my cousins, of course. Lafitte, Rothschild, Latour, Margot, and Aubryon. And and in fact, when it was classified in nineteen seventy three. In fact, most people thought that it was quite normal in a way because, you know, it's a market that makes, uh, which is normal, that makes the law. And Mouton was already selling uh, long before 1973 uh, as, uh, as much for as much money and the, as the other ones, really. Okay. It, it, you were, as I said, an actress. Mm hmm Definitely. I uh, had no intention to run the vineyard. Um... I'm not someone who looks into the future so much. I always live what's going on. My father was totally responsible, great man, great relationship with him, but he was a guru. He was, I mean, you can't have two people responsible for something like that. So um, it didn't cross my mind that I would, that I was going to run Mouton. I knew that some very far away day it might happen, but my life wasn't made around that. And Mouton was always my, my, Holiday place, I always say my holiday place has become my working place. Yeah. But it's always Mouton. I mean, I was there when I was a very little girl. I mean, I was, I was already, you know, I was acting in Mouton with all the little girls around. Yes. I was producing plays when I was 10, you know, tragedies, of course. I was doing The King always. I was acting yeah. The King. That was when I was a little girl. But I always wanted to be in the theatre. I mean, the theatre's all... I can't remember not, uh, not being in the theatre. People said, well, how did you... No, I, I never thought, I never thought. It just was obvious. So how did you come to... The only to... thing is, my father said, if you're going to do it, do it, do it as better than others because uh, you can't take people's money, you know, and you're going to be paid for, and so you must do it well. And he so was right. that was part of his value system. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something, mm -hmm. do it well and be number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he dies, mm -hmm. and you take it over. You take over yes, the leadership. Yes, to be honest, I, I had been, I, I'd been on the board. I'd been on the board for a long time, on the board of our company. You know, we have a, we, we have a company and we, right. we uh, market a lot of other wines, Mouton Cadet, right. and we do in many Amawas. I have a wine in Chile now. I have Opus One. I have right. the half of right. Opus One in California, which is a fabulous wine, etc., etc., which was with the Mandavis now, right. etc. And so um, I had been involved in, in the wine business since the 80s, in fact. I would say, yes, the 80s. 
So 88, when my father wasn't very well in the 80s, he started not being very well. So I, I had to really, I, I stopped. Um, you can't do two things well, I don't think. So mm. I really had to stop the theater in the 80s. When did you begin the exhibiting of the labels? You see, long before my father passed away, you say passed out or passed away? Passed away. Passed away. Passed away. Uh, long before, and the funny thing is, when I, in 81, I started that in 81. When, when I started, my father was amazed by this I, crazy, he thought it was a crazy idea. And I said, but your idea was crazy when you put some <laughs> art on your label. Why can't I have a crazy idea? And so he, he was rather amused by that, finally. But at the same time, he was totally pessimistic. I remember he would say, but nobody's going to come to your exhibition. What do you think? They won't be interested in seeing what you were. Nobody won't have any success at all. He was totally pessimistic, which was really not making things very easy. But I had, funnily enough, it links with, it's linked with America. I was in um, Beverly Hills in the 80s, and some people in large houses in Beverly Hills had stuck off the labels of Mouton and made a poster of them and put them not only not in their lavatory or in their bathroom, which I thought was, you know, already, but no, 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 in their hall, in their dining room. So the idea came to me like that. I thought to myself, if these people are, do something so crazy as to stick off labels, which is only a reproduction, you know, for, you know of a painting, wouldn't they be interested to see the real thing? That's how it and came And you were to me. right. And how well, many times, yes. and you've been doing that how often? Oh, we've been, we, you see, we were taken by Sites. Sites is a department of the Smithsonian in Washington, yes. Smithsonian Institution of Traveling Exhibition Service, ah. which traveled the exhibition around America. That's why I'm so linked with America. I'm so happy to be here. You see, it's, for me, it's very important. Uh, we went in many, many cities, Atlanta and Houston and Dallas and wherever. Okay, and, tell me about, this is the 2004 bottle and this is... Mm -hmm. Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. right, tell me about this. Well, uh, it, it was an interesting idea. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a watercolorist. Yes. And he values very much, you know, he's, he's very an, an arty person. He loves art. Right, an architect and, and art. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I, I met him, she, now his grandmother had been to Mouton in 1977. Yes. And the 1977 vintage doesn't bear any um, painting. It bears just the signature of uh, uh, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, who had been to Mouton. So he had, there was a sort of link there, the sort of tradition, if I may say. And the interesting thing was that simply the 204 is the 100th anniversary of the Entente Cordiale. That's oh. really the reason. And I'm sure Prince Charles would not have done it if it hadn't been for some a very good reason. That, that is celebration. It's written on the label, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. To celebrate, the, he's written in his to own... To celebrate the 100th anniversary... Voila. ...of the, the Entente, Entente Cordiale. Cordiale. Yes, right, that's right, yes. Charles. Now, so that's the real reason why he decided that he would put his name on... You're the... also going to have an auction... Yes. ...from your private cellar. Yes, but it's, it's a little piece of, the, of, of my private cellar. Yeah, of course, tiny yeah. little piece. Yeah, yeah, how many? Yeah. How much? There are more, a bit more. You have the catalogue there, so. Oh, yes, 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 <laughs> we do. Yes, 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 yes. You have the catalogue. You're more, knowledge, catalog. more knowledgeable Chateau than Montau me. Chateau Rothschild, Treasures from the Private Cellar of Baroness Philippine. This is... Um, exactly. There it is, and you'll see the kinds yes. of things that... Yes, no, there are great wines that are going to be sold, and it's, but it's very small quantities, let me put it that way. There is something which is very extraordinary, which is a, a Jeroboam of 1945. Of course, that's yeah. the mythical year for Mouton. Yeah. 1945 is the uh, 12 bottles of 45 sold for, I don't even remember what price, in Los Angeles two months ago or something like that. I mean, the 45 and is something... And what made it so great? Because it's an extraordinary wine. Yeah. You see, uh, there's never any... I don't think quality is... Um, I mean, quality is the key word. And I think when there's such quality, um, it's, it's, not, it's not marketing. It's, it's really quality. 45 is an amazing year. I mean, there were two journalists, English journalists, talking together about 1945 three or four years ago at a dinner at home, and one was saying to the other, I'm not sure it's quite ready to drink. <laughs> can, can, you, can you imagine? The great years have been 61, yes, 86... 80, 82. 82, mm -hmm. 2000... No, no, 86, you're absolutely 86, right, well done. 2000. 82, 86, 2000, 2003... They're saying that yes. 2005 mm -hmm. is extraordinary. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. I think it is go it's going to be very extraordinary. But personally, I don't like to make pronostics. Do you say pronostics? Yeah, prognostications, yes. Pro okay, yeah. oh, that's a new word for me. Uh, I, uh, 
I don't like to make that sort of thing with such young wines. I'm always rather terrified of journalists, not like you, journalists making, saying before the harvest has been done, you know, oh, it's going mm. to be quite extraordinary. I mean, wait, a wine is a very special beverage. It's so different to the other beverages. That's what it makes it sort of uh, glory and value. It evaluates. It evaluates all the time. And some of the vintages that we're not even talking about now uh, are, it suddenly are become extraordinary. Like, for instance, I will quote 87. The people, if people are listening to us, uh, wine people, they will say, what is she talking about? 87 is a very bad year. Well, tell them to try. Try 87. It's delicious. It's becoming delicious. It's evaluating. Mm. That's what's so amusing with wine. You have had to meet the challenge of the marketplace. You develop Mouton Cadet, Cadet, is it? Mm -hmm. Mouton Cadet. Cadet, to meet the sort of, mm -hmm. meet the lower price level for wine, yes? Yes, yes, of course, yes, yes. That, uh, by the way, my father created Mouton Cadet, uh, which was really rather extraordinary. My father had, you know, he was a, a sort of genius in a way. I mean, he, he had, he's the first person, by the way, because this is something really deep, who said, making wine is art. A great wine is art. So for him, it was normal to put art on his bottle. It was something very yeah. normal. And, of course, creating the Museum of Wine in Art, which is our museum, which I hope you'll visit one yes. day when you come to France, because that is also extremely special. I mean, uh, it's one of the most exciting and most remarkable private museums in, in France. I mean, and that is the, uh, in Mouton. Everybody who visits the cellars visits uh, the Museum of Wine in Art. So, He's had a sort of uh, thing about that, or, or, always my father. But my point was you've mm -hmm. had to meet competition and a changing wine yeah. market. Mm -hmm. you, you have a vineyard in Chile. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you have a You had a relationship with Robert Mondavi. Of course, of course, yes. Um, the strong it, one. It is said that France is losing its share of the wine market, that... Uh, it used to have 30%, say, or more 10 years ago, announced about 15%. Is that no, a fair I, appraisal? I don't quite agree with that point of view. I think one has to be very careful uh, what, what the media say and what the, the, the real truth is. Um, and I would be very blunt about this. I think in Bordeaux we make much too much, too much bad wine. So you see, I, in a way, I'm agreeing mm -hmm. with what you're mm -hmm. saying. We, we, we are not good enough in uh, selecting sometimes our wines, but we're talking of mediocre wines when I say that. I think the great wines of Bordeaux have a future. I don't think they, they, are, they, are, they have no problem. And it's there will always be a demand for oh, yes. great wines from Absolutely. Bordeaux. Absolutely. And if the Californians make just as good wines as Bordeaux, so much the better. I'm very happy if other people make good wine because it means that we were right to do what we but we're doing. I mean, the, the Californian ones are fabulous now. They are wonderful, of course. But the Californians have, OK, we have 200 years of making wine, but the Californians now have 80 or 90 years of making wine, which is a tradition, which is a long time. I mean, it's normal that they make great wines, and they do. You have three children, mm -hmm. yes? Two sons and a daughter. Yes, yes, right. Now, it is said the two sons will take over. Yes. When exactly. will you hand it over to the sons? Oh, oh, do I have to say today? <laughs> no. no answer to that. <laughs> You're having a good time. Yes, no, I mean, to be honest, I'm delighted of, of what they're doing. I'm delighted if they take more importance. I'm delighted that they uh, like Mouton. Let me tell you one thing. I think what is important is the family business side. Mm. It's, family businesses are dying, and it's very important to make them live up and be able to pass, you know, I hope our rights, you know, are so high, mm -hmm. uh, so high and so it's very difficult now in France. There are many um, properties that are being sold very sadly to big groups instead of remaining in the same family. So I, I'm very lucky to have my two sons and I'm, I'm very happy that they are going to, you know, to be Good there. for you. Mm -hmm. I want to just run through some of these labels before we leave. Uh, we, we show the Brock. Next is Salvador Dali. From 1958. Mm -hmm. Where's Dali? Yes. You see it? Oh, yes, he did the little sheep. Yeah. Yes. Miro yes. from 1969. That's a beautiful one. That's that's beautiful. Yes. 
These are really terrific. Just give you a yes. sense of what no, you no. can see. Yes, Should... because, Charlie, I hope you come and see the exhibition. I hope many people come and see this exhibition because what you see is quite different. You see, it, it's, it's, it, it's not at all the same size. Yes. <laughs> you see, the, the, the paintings in the exhibition are from... Bach did a very small painting, for instance. Right. He did... Like but Motherwell did a, a thing mm. like that. Mm. Okay. And Andy Warhol did... They, they, they done I'm, I'm going to show them. Mm. Chagall, 1970. Yeah, 1970, yes. And here is... The, Chagall, 1970, and here yes. is the famous Picasso, 1973, mm -hmm. a special label to celebrate the reclassification of Mouton to first growth. Exactly. Premier Cru, and commemorate... Premier Cru, well done. And to commemorate Picasso's death. Yes. It was the year of his death. Uh, the next one is the Picasso label in its exhibit glass case. Oh, good. There it is. Ah, yes, and now they chose, because that is what is, the exhibition is done in these sort of butterfly cases, you know, mm. quite thick. And um, so it, it means it's a common denominator, which was absolutely essential, considering the difference in size of all these paintings. The next is the Andy Warhol, 1975. Mm -hmm. That's the Baron Philippe de Rothschild. Mm -hmm. That's my father's portrait. Now, get this. This is interesting. The next one is John Huston mm -hmm. from 1982. Mm -hmm. Great year. Great year. Yeah. And if I tell you all my uh, tribulations with John Huston, I went to Puerto Vallarta to see him. <laughs> yes. I was, I just, can I tell you the story? <laughs> yes, please. It was the 60, my father's 60th harvest at Mouton. Yeah. And so I, my father was saying, what we, could we put on the label that somebody that could write to my friend or to, or to Philippe for his 60th? I said, why not John Huston is a friend of yours? He, he was a friend yeah, of my stepmother yeah. and everything. And so my father says, oh, John will never do a painting for Mouton. He won't want that. I said, let me go and ask him. So I took my little suitcase and I went to Mexico <laughs> and I went to John Huston and we became quite friendly about two days. I spent two days looking at boxing matches. Yes. I knew nothing about boxing. Now I know more thanks to John. After two days, John said, darling, you've come for something. What have you come for? I know you've come to see me, but... And I said, but John, I've come because my father would like you to do a, um, a drawing from what... Oh, your father will ne never take a drawing of mine for your... So there was one on one side of my father <laughs> saying, He'll John never will it. never do it. And there was John saying, your father will never... So I had to put these two gurus, these yes. two Buddhas, and so together. There, and there and it that, is. And there it is. All right, next is Francis Bacon in 1990. Yeah, that was wonderful also. His wonderful relationship with Francis Bacon. He was an extraordinary man. And then the next one from 1993... Baltus, that Baltus. was a problem. I'm not sure you should show the that. The controversial nude girl yes, label yes, that inspired yes. some recall protests you know in the I, United States. Do what I was States? accused of, Mr. Trose? I was accused, accused of? of doing kiddie porn. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think no. that was quite in my... No, that was no. not your intent. <laughs> not really, no. Robert Wilson in 2001. Ah, that's a great, Bob great Wilson. friend. Yes. And he, he made a sort of portrait of me. It's not really... It's, it's very... Very glorified. <laughs> uh, next is Prince Charles, the one we talked yes. about, too. This is the bottle yes, here. Yes, of to course. be unveiled this year, yes, commemorates yes. the centenary of the... He calls it Mediterranean Pines. Cordial, he calls it what? Mediterranean Pines on the Cap mm, d'Antibes. There we go. Um, it's great to have you on this program. Thank A you. A pleasure. Thank you. And much success having me. this weekend with um, the exhibit and also the uh, auction. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.